probably not ride you too much for being late. All right. Stephanie, you brought somebody with you? Jeff, have I met you before? I don't know. Yeah, we met. Uh, Way to leave a lasting impression on me. Exactly. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, so, so obviously a small crowd today. We're missing a few people. George? I mean, you know, we put out a call when you were gone. Obviously, Ted's not here today. He's typically here, but I understand. It is the Masters today, and so um, people kind of seem to get a little bit of a cough coming on when the Masters. I mean, the Masters is really the holy grail of golf, as us golfers know. It's um, it's really the the signal of the start of the golfing season, but we'll we'll talk about that here in a minute. I want to welcome you all here. There's a couple of topics we want to talk about, and we have some friends here with us to help us. Um, I want to talk about the library, and then we're going to mention something pretty special that happened recently with our Wichita Housing Authority, and then certainly we want to talk about some golf courses and what we're doing there. We'll start with the library. Um, the library folks are going to invite the public to participate and participate in an online survey aimed at helping to improve its technology services. The technology, the the responses will help the library understand how patrons use the library's technology so that we can provide resources and services that are valuable to the community. As we look at revitalizing our library's presence, its role in learning in our community, we want to be certain its technology offerings serve the needs of our community. So we want to hear your feedback as we make plans for our library's future. The survey is going to include some general questions on how you use the library and the library's website and other services. The survey will ask some specific questions related to employment, education, entrepreneurship, health and wellness, e-government, civic engagement, e-commerce, and social inclusion. The survey can be accessed by visiting wichitalibrary.org. And we have a couple of library folks with us today, and we'll ask them to step up and see if they have anything to add. So Stephanie or Jeff. Uh, this is a technology survey that we've done. Uh, Stephanie Hoff, the marketing uh, manager at the library. Uh, this technology survey we've done just about every two years, and it's helped inform us in making the decisions of knowing where to invest um, our, our money and to best provide the technology for those um, who use a library. Uh, one in four people in Wichita don't have internet in their own home. Um, and about a little shy of 20% don't have a computer. So we would like to make sure that we provide those services and abilities for people who may not have the access in their own home. Thank you, Stephanie. And as everyone knows, the new Advanced Learning Library Center is going to have tremendous emphasis on technology. And so it's very important that we get this right. And we know that you all will. And with the help of the public, We'll make sure that we have what's most appealing to them. Housing has um, something pretty special to offer today. We have John Hall that's with us, and we'll give him a chance to, to share some remarks here. But we have recently received notification that uh, we have been awarded $177,550 in the form of a uh, grant self sufficient um, through our um, self sufficiency service coordinator grant self sufficiency service coordinator grant one hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars has been awarded to the city of Wichita and so this grant will aid us as we work toward helping residents of public housing gain self sufficiency 
The money will be used for residents to receive transportation assistance, medical services, meals, and educational services. So I want to say congratulations to our terrific team. And at this point, ask John Hall if he would like to come up and share uh, a few remarks. So John. Thank you, Mayor Longwell. Yes, it's absolutely great news for the city. I'm very excited to share this, this opportunity, this grant announcement from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The service coordinator position is literally the lifeline for our residents when they reach a point in their lives where daily tasks become challenging. And so having assistance uh, as we work with the Central Plains Area Agency on Aging to provide transportation, to go get groceries and things of that sort, it will help our aging population to be able to age in place and maintain their independence for as long as possible. And so we're very excited that this opportunity has been maintained by our Wichita Housing Authority to provide the services throughout our senior communities uh, here in the city of Wichita. Mayor Longwell, I'm also very excited um, to announce right off the press, um, the state of Kansas Housing Resources Corporation has awarded the city of Wichita a grant in the amount of $943,594 for its community services block grant. As you may remember, we presented this grant application a couple months ago, and it was for, uh, to provide job readiness training for our residents, 1,300 residents who are at uh, the poverty level here in the city of Wichita. So this, these funds will help us prepare residents to be placed into jobs uh, and to help uh, the economy here, uh, the local labor force in the city of Wichita. Thank hey, you, Mayor. You're, you're going to have to help me out. I think I misunderstood you. Did you say 900,000? Yes. Wow. That is awesome. So thank you. Thank Good you, Good stuff. It's nice to have both smart people and partners that can get the job done and we have both and so it is great news and this community can use that money so thank you very much we'll talk about golf and we have uh, Troy Hendricks here who is going to share with us here in just a moment I will clear out a couple of things that probably maybe maybe not need to be said but I will share with you that one, those are my golf clubs right there. And two, unless you have irresputable visual proof, that was not me up on the roof hitting golf balls at the county building earlier today. The um, golf made the news this week. As you've heard at our city council meeting, we needed to buy some more equipment. We did raise our rates very slightly. But I want everyone to understand that we have some of the best kept public golf courses in the country. And even with the fee increases, they are still very affordable and present a great deal for golfers across the country. Troy was just sharing with me that he uh, had the opportunity to play golf just recently with a couple of people visiting our city. And these are um, people that came in from Tulsa. And they play. Um, they they had the opportunity to play Auburn Hills. When they played Auburn Hills a few weeks ago, it was what twenty one dollars or in that range. Pretty good golfers. They shared with Troy that their home public golf course in Tulsa area. The average green fee that they play that they pay to play their course, regular public golf course was somewhere in the $60 range for weekdays and $85 on weekends. That's the kind of comparison that we have that we can easily tell you. We are a great value. The Golf Week magazine even named Auburn Hills Golf Course one of the top five municipal golf courses in Kansas. And so I'm going to let Troy come up and share some remarks and and visit with you about some of the things that he's doing and, and um, want to let the public know that we have affordable, terrific golf courses and encourage people to get out. And so, Troy? 
Thank you, Mayor Longwear. Uh, I'm Troy Hendricks. I'm the golf manager for the city. Um, some of the things that we're doing in order to continue the growth of golf in Wichita is we have got five golf professionals that are very involved in growing the game of golf. Uh, and continuing on uh, some of the things we started in 2000, late 2013, we implemented a uh, young adult pass for ages 18 to 23, and then we reduced our youth student pass to cost of that, which is for 17 and under, and we've seen a great growth in those two pass areas and utilization of our golf courses. So in order to keep that momentum, what we've done this year is some of the programs that we have developed are going to be our SNAG program, which is as an acronym for, for starting new at golf. They use equipment that is oversized. They use tennis balls. They use, instead of a cup, they have a flagstick wiki. They call it a flagstick wiki, which has got Velcro on it that the ball sticks to, when they're, and that's how they hold out. Uh, it can be done in, indoors. It can be done outside. All you need is just some open space. You actually don't even have to have a golf course to do it. But it, the grips are designed to teach the kids how to hold the clubs properly. We've just started that program uh, this year at our five courses. We're going to have four sessions. Uh, there's, anybody that wants to do it with their kids is for ages six to nine. It's a great program for starting new at golf. Uh, we also are working with the Wichita Junior Golf Foundation. We continue that partnership with them. We do the junior golf uh, programs at all five of our golf courses. They are held on Mondays at four of the five courses. And then on Tuesdays, it'll be held at Auburn Hills. We have two junior pro beginning programs at LW Clapp and at Auburn Hills. Once those kids are finished with that program, then they can progress on into playing at the Sim Golf Course, LW Clapp, McDonald, and at Tex Consolver. Uh, then when they do that, they're going to either be playing in the f three holes, five holes, nine holes, or, or 18 hole leagues that they have that play. It's a great way to get children introduced to golf. This year we're starting new for, the, for our courses anyway. It'll be the third year that the PGA of America has had the PGA Junior League. The PGA Junior League was implemented a few years back to try to get kids interested in golf in a team aspect similar to baseball where you might have kids that go in and they play three innings and they substitute somebody in. So what they've done is they've developed this program to where it's a 12 kids on the team, they play an eight-man team, and they substitute players as they're playing the nine holes. They play a team scramble against other courses that are also doing the junior league. How you finish in your league, then you can have the chance to move on to regional tournaments, and then they finally have the national tournament, which was held in, at Disney World uh, last November. And I, one of our teams from the Midwest here uh, actually made it to the national finals. Uh, they didn't finish well, but they did make it there, so they had a, they had a wonderful time. We continue to offer junior lessons uh, and private lessons and group lessons at all of our golf courses. It's a great way for parents to bring their kids out that are a little more experienced and maybe want to uh, advance in golf. Uh, then this year we are taking over, uh, as the golf division is, taking over the Hook a Kid on Golf program. Uh, Recreation decided that they wanted to uh, hand it over to us uh, because we're golf and they're recreation. So we're taking that over. We're going to have those programs. They're going to run in August at four of our five golf courses. It's a great way. The, the fee is $75 for the kids to sign up for that. They get a, a shirt, a hat, a set of clubs, and then a week of instruction with the golf professionals. High school golf is... Uh, they, the teams struggle here in town, uh, especially when you look at the girls' golf. So what we decided to do this year is because, you know, so many people want their kids to play in some, some tournaments, is we've started the Wichita Public Golf Course Junior Tour. The Junior Tour will consist of eight tournaments. Uh, that will be played at our golf courses on Sunday afternoons starting at 1 o'clock. They will then accumulate points based on how they finish, and then our last tournament will be the Wichita Junior Cup, and we'll play that at Sim Golf Course, and they will have a, a banquet afterwards. Uh, but a great way for kids to be able to learn to play competitive golf. That'll, then that'll, those kids, when they learn to play that way and learn to play in, competitively, then they can then start filling in on some of the golf teams. I know the, in the public schools, their girls' programs, some of the schools don't have enough kids that are interested in playing. So we want to do this to help develop golf in the schools and, at, and see us developing golfers that will be using our golf courses in the future. <clears throat> we, haven't we haven't forgot about all the big kids. We haven't about all the big kids. We do offer some tournaments for our bigger kids, uh, such as our Neon Nights uh, Light to Dark tournament. That's uh, going to be a little takeoff of one we did last year. And it's a great event. We're going to play nine holes scramble during the day, stop, have dinner, and then play the second nine holes after dark using night, night golf balls. So it'll be a great event. That's going to be held at Texas Solver coming up. 
So for any information you want to know about the Wichita Public Golf Courses, all you need to do is go to our website, golfwichita.com. We have a very good website there. It's, you know, if you're interactive, you can sign up for the lesson programs right there. If you click on it, it's hyperlinked directly to our web store through our point of sale system, and you can pay for everything right there. So if, other than that, thank you for the time. Have a great day. Thank you, Troy. I have a few golf balls if you'd like to have a little chipping or putting contest here later. We could see if we can. All right. So thank you all for coming. Any questions? We appreciate you being here. Go out and enjoy the weather and um, enjoy the uh, Masters Golf Tournament that's going today. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming.